Today, all the talk is about this March on Washington, the Women's March. Good morning to you, Ben. That happens later on this morning. Good morning and welcome back to Sunrise. Time now is 6.30 on your Saturday morning. Congratulations, you made it to the weekend and thank you so much for kicking it off with us. And that's one of the things the deputies are talking to us about out here is the danger of these kinds of situations for officers themselves. I do want to give you a good look at the scene behind us here. This is the home where this all happened. Julia, good morning to you. Immigration reform was one of Donald Trump's big biggest campaign promises and now less than a week into office he's already making good on that slogan we all remember this is a story these pictures you will see online today as you wake up and look through your feed because everyone who knows these two young women is desperately hoping to find them this is the entrance here to the trail where they were last seen good afternoon i'm naomi paskovitz our top story this noon a local fertility doctor who's made national headlines appeared before a judge this morning dr Donald Klein is charged with obstruction of justice, but reportedly admits to using his own sperm dozens of times to impregnate patients. Our top story this noon, a deadly shooting in Muncie. A woman was killed in her home. Now a man and woman are both being questioned, including someone related to the victim. Much more on that tragedy in Dallas in a moment. But first, we are also keeping a close eye on live Doppler 13 radar. But a couple of my tips right here, one involves socks. The other involves toothpaste. Why? Seems a little bizarre. We're going to show you coming up in our next hour of sunrise. All right. And Naomi, I'm never coming <laughs> to your house in the winter if 55 is an appropriate <laughs> setting. That's just what I have to tell people. You know, mine's at like 85. <laughs> Julia, come on. <gasps> this is disgusting. Get a fat one. You think so? <laughs> okay. I got this oh, giant. Can you guys see this? This is going to be good. Can you see that? That's, that's good. It's bacon cheddar. Cheers. <laughs> it kind of tastes like popcorn. It is called the Women's March on Washington, but there are plenty of men here as well. They're expecting as many as 200,000 people. The weather is holding up, so I imagine we will see some pretty large crowds, even bigger than the ones we've already seen. That's not the only action that Trump has been taking since he took office. In fact, his chief of staff sent out a memo yesterday putting a freeze on all pending regulations. That includes regulations that came from the Obama administration. He's made a point to say it's not anti-Trump, but pro women's rights. Busloads, though, of women are expected. In fact, overnight, I got a text message from one of the groups coming from Indiana, 2 a.m., sending me a text message, a video of them on the bus. So folks aren't even planning on staying in D.C. They're just busing in. They're going to be here for a couple of hours. Happy birthday, Naomi. Happy birthday to you, too. <laughs> it's Naomi's birthday. And it's Bruce's birthday. <laughs> How does this so, happen? I don't think this has ever birthday. happened. Thank you so much. In, in the Thank history you. of broadcast television at, <laughs> Never. This, at this hour of the morning. Co-anchors having a birthday together. Yeah. We've got our lovely friend Kelly to help us yeah. celebrate. We've got a lot of fun stuff actually planned this yeah. morning for birthday Saturday here on Sunrise, including some... <laughs> Filet mignon. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. With a candle in it, I hope. So. Mm, I like that. Mine will, yes. lot, mine will be well done with, <laughs> with the number of candles. Medium <laughs> rare. <laughs> Florida police officers are being credited with saving a man's life after rescuing him from a burning car. It's all caught on camera, too. Take a look. Police say the 44-year-old man crashed his car into that concrete barrier. That's when three officers ran to his side, pulling him there to safety. You can see them dragging him out right as the car burst into flames. There's no word on what caused the crash, but the man is expected to make a full recovery. Several western states are still under threat from severe weather this week. In Wyoming, gusts of wind toppled a semi onto a police cruiser. Look at that. Thankfully, though, no one was hurt. Here's some flooding in Idaho, swallowing homes and cars there. And mudslides in Washington state are destroying houses. Now heavy rains in California have been sweeping away cars, and at least one person has been killed. And just outside Sacramento, a freight train derailed into a river. Three people were on board that train when it went off the tracks. Thankfully, no one was hurt. A red substance started leaking out of one of the train cars, so hazmat crews were called to the scene. You can see that red substance there. Now there's an investigation to find out what it might be.
A new pet food recall is out this morning. It's for PetSmart's Great Choice Adult Dog Food. It's sold online. The company says there could be metal inside the food, which could be a choking hazard for your pets. Customers can return the cans to their local PetSmart stores for a full refund or an exchange. One Texas couple is causing quite a stir at an elementary school after their trip to the front office. The principal had never seen them before, but they stopped into the school and wrote a check covering all of the outstanding student lunch balances. That was money that parents owed to the school cafeteria. They said, you know, we, we don't have any kids that go to Rolaine, but we had a niece who went through. You guys are our neighborhood school. We thought we want to drop by and do something. The couple says they want to stay anonymous, but that donation worth hundreds of thousands of dollars in student lunches. A local family is raising awareness about a rare disorder many have never even heard about. This family certainly hadn't until their son was diagnosed. It's called Angelman Syndrome. And our Emily Ongnecker spoke with two parents about how they're tackling the disease head on and who they expect to be their son's biggest cheerleader. Here we go. Hold on. I strongly believe he is going to be his biv biggest advocate down the road as well. Jackson's own little wingman who's been with him since this journey started. Emily Longnecker, Channel 13, Eyewitness News. And a very cute little wingman too, mm -hmm. by the way. Wednesday is National Angelman Syndrome Awareness Day. So if you want to know more about that story that Emily just brought us, just check out our website. Mm -hmm. uh, we definitely hope the best for him. Yeah. And it's great to have a twin brother by your side. Yeah, huh? and what a great family. Mm -hmm. So supportive. It's awesome. If you're stepping outside for the first time this morning, maybe you're going out for a run. Mm -hmm. uh, not the two of us, but we know some <laughs> people are getting ready for the mini. It's not as cold as you might think for mid-February. Unseasonably mild. Yesterday, it got up to 51 degrees, but we started at 14 degrees. Wow. 37 degree temperature change. And keep in mind, in general, it's normally a 20 degree temperature change mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis. So that is unseasonably uh, unheard of for this time of year. And here's a look at our satellite radar. We definitely have clouds around. So changes are going to be moving in today, but it will be mild throughout the day today. Temperatures have been falling a few degrees. Since midnight, we were around 51 degrees. We're now at 50 in Indianapolis, 45 in Kokomo, 46 degrees in Greencastle, 49 in Muncie. And winds are out of the southwest, sustained between 10 and 15 miles per hour. The good news is we're not seeing any kind of fog developing this morning, and those winds out of the southwest are keeping us very mild. In fact, when we look at our 24-hour temperature change, we are running 30 degrees warmer in Muncie at this hour than yesterday at this time, and 25 degrees warmer in Shelbyville. So just a very mild start to our day. Temperatures at 50 degrees at the Indianapolis airport with those winds out of the southwest at 15 miles per hour. Mostly cloudy skies, and most of the day will stay cloudy. We do have a chance of some spotty showers by early afternoon. I think the bulk of it is going to hold off until later on tonight. So if you are going out for any kind of Valentine's Day celebrations, you definitely need to take the rain gear. We will see temperatures climbing into those upper 50s, close to 60 degrees this afternoon. And then the rain will start to push in later on around uh, 5 or 6 o'clock tonight. 54 will be the high in Kokomo, 53 as we head into Noblesville, 57 will be the high in Cumberland, 58 in Greenwood, 60 almost 60 degrees in Bloomington. And then tonight, if you're heading to the Pacer game, it's definitely going to be a wet one. You'll need to take the rain gear as you're heading to Banker's Life. But notice these temperatures holding steady in the low 50s. Tomorrow morning, we are going to be dealing with some fog. It will drop likely less than a mile of visibility, so you'll want to check back with us tomorrow morning. Temperatures will also be changing as we see the timeline from early tomorrow morning through the late morning hours. They will fall into the low 40s, then we'll rebound back into the mid 40s by afternoon. But all in all, it's going going to be um, a gradual clearing with the skies. We will see a lot more sunshine by Sunday afternoon. As we get into Monday, really a nice day, 45, dry and sunny. Much of the same for Tuesday. We are tracking a chance of a few snow showers on Wednesday, back to near normal as we get into Thursday, but warming up again as we get into next weekend. Naomi? Kelly, thank you. If you're looking for something fun to do with the family this weekend, we've got the perfect idea. We're talking to a featured artist at this weekend's Meet the Artist event at the Downtown Central Library.
Good morning. Welcome back to Sunrise. It's now 6.30 on your Saturday. Naomi Peskovitz here with Kelly Green. We've got tons of fun stuff happening in the city this weekend. Our Matt McCutcheon is going to take you to a training run for the mini marathon, if you're already thinking about that. Uh, we're also just a couple days out from Valentine's mm -hmm. Day. So maybe you're going out tonight yeah, for celebrating. Yeah, people would be celebrating tonight. I'm sure there's probably not many reservations left. <laughs> yes, probably not. And the, the weather for the out and about? Yeah, you know what? It's going to be wet. We're not tracking snow, but okay. we are tracking rain, and we are tracking details on that and how it will affect the rest of your weekend coming up. Naomi? Kelly, thank you. If you're planning to travel downtown this morning, you will notice some road closures. Runners are thinking spring while they get ready for the month of May. Sunrise reporter Matt McCutcheon joins us live downtown with all that is happening, and he's nice and warm inside. Hey, Matt, good morning. Naomi can't complain. It's actually warm outside as well. Sure. sure. Let's say we'll show off the t-shirt here that's real quick. Right. Naomi, if you get up and you come down here for the run starting this morning, that's what you can expect here coming up at 9 o'clock. We'll have more, of course, here on Sunrise throughout this warm Saturday morning. Yeah, maybe we'll even get Matt McCutcheon out there running at some point. We'll have to see. Uh, but in the meantime, say hi to all the runners getting ready for spring in the month of May. We'll chat with you soon. Meantime, a week and a half after the sudden closing of a nationwide adoption agency, almost 2,000 people are left looking for answers. The Independent Adoption Center says 136 Indiana couples were in the process of adopting children. Kristen and David Baldock of Indianapolis are among them, but they are not giving up the dream of adopting a child. David is a teacher, and one of his students' parents decided to help. That mom set up a GoFundMe page to help them raise the money for a second chance. It really brings tears to your eyes. The Hoosier couples, two of them, have issued complaints to the state attorney general's office, which says it is monitoring the situation. Investigators are trying to figure out what started a house fire in Shelbyville that trapped a woman inside. Flames were pouring out of this home yesterday as firefighters forced their way in to rescue the 53-year-old woman. They carried her out of a window. She was then flown to a hospital burn center for treatment. And for the second time this week, a school bus in central Indiana has been involved in a crash while children were on board. State police say a car hit the back of a bus in Muncie on Friday morning, and the car got lodged underneath there. Police say the driver did not stop for the bus, which was waiting to pick up a child. None of the students were hurt. But this follows another wreck Thursday in Lafayette that sent eight students to the hospital with minor injuries. In that case, police cited the driver of a pickup truck for blowing through a red light and hitting the side of that bus. Later today, groups of Hoosiers are gathering to rally against Planned Parenthood. That rally is at the facility off Georgetown Road here in Indianapolis starting at noon. It's just one of 200 events around the country today calling for Planned Parenthood to be stripped of all federal funding. But just a few hours later, hundreds will be rallying for Planned Parenthood at the State House. That second rally runs from 2 until 5 o'clock this evening. Kelly Green back with me now to talk about our pre-Valentine's Day weekend <laughs> forecast. But because Valentine's Day is on a Tuesday, we know a lot of people have plans tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And a Center Grove mom is sharing her story this morning after finding her purpose and reaching her goals that were 15 years in the making. Welcome back to Sunrise, 639 on a Saturday morning, and today we bring you the story of a Center Grove mother who's about to reach a goal 15 years in the making. A special need inspired Jennifer Daggett to pursue her purpose, and our Anne Marie Tiernan shares her story. Jennifer Daggett is an OR nurse at Methodist Hospital. Why do 450 people go volunteer on a ship, pay their way there? I'm a human being. I love Jesus. I'm going to share what I got. Well, check this out, too. This is Jennifer's youngest son, Calvin. He was five when Jennifer started this journey and actually graduated from high school in 2015, just one year before she completed her bachelor's. Gives you an idea of just how much work has gone into this. She leaves a week from today on the 18th, and she won't be the only Hoosier on board. The operating room manager, Missy Brown, is also from Indiana. To learn more, we have a link at WTHR.com.
Now to some harrowing video out of South Carolina this morning as dozens of rescue workers save an injured hiker there. The woman hurt her leg after falling on a rock face along a hiking trail. About 25 people helped rescue her using a rope system that pulled the woman up the face of that mountain. Unbelievable. Doctors say that woman is expected to make a full recovery. And Valentine's Day is coming up fast, just three days away now. Flower growers in the nation of Colombia are hard at work during the industry's busiest season. Workers are expected to put together more than 250,000 boxes of flowers for the big day. That's a whopping 65 jumbo jets worth of flowers. The U.S., one of their best customers. Almost 80% of our imported flowers come from Colombia. And what would Valentine's Day be without chocolate? Here is some chocolate that almost looks too good to eat. This is in the city of Brussels, Belgium. They had a chocolate fashion show. They're known for their chocolate. The event had teams of chefs and designers working to create these outfits. So I think they're made mostly in, of chocolate, like those little chips you see on there. Those are chocolate. Um, I'm not sure about the fabric part, but it looks like those danglies are probably some sort of chocolate, too. Uh, <laughs> Some of these take five weeks, one designer is saying, just to make these dresses. And you got to hope it's not too hot there because otherwise mm, it would melt. But, like, yeah, it looks like they're even painting chocolate oh onto the fabric. That's so funny. Five weeks, you wear it once, and then I guess you could eat it. It might be kind of gross. I guess. I think I'd just rather have the box of chocolates than a so dress made I. of chocolates. So note to Kelly's husband, do not buy her a chocolate dress <laughs> right. for Valentine's Day. Uh, it would probably get a little wet today anyway. It would. You know, it's going to be a night where a lot of people will be celebrating Valentine's Day. Naomi? All right, Kelly, thank you. It is the weekend of sequels at the box office. And just in time for Valentine's Day, here's a look at some fun movies to go see with that special someone. Raphael Seth has the details. Okay, fine. I will have dinner with you. Raphael Seth, NBC News. We need him. Well, the mother of a Butler basketball player is diagnosed with a rare cancer. Their story as Sean McDermott fights on and off the court for his mom, Kim. Welcome back to Sunrise at 6.52 on your Saturday. The mother of a Butler basketball player is recovering this morning from a surgery to remove her cancer. Kim McDermott hopes to make it to her son Sean's games again before the end of the season. Eyewitness sports reporter Rich Nye tells us how basketball made this mother and son relationship so close. Butler's Sean McDermott warms up for games wearing a t-shirt tribute to his mom. I'm Rich Nye, Channel 13 Eyewitness Sports. Well, Kim came through the surgery extremely well. Doctors didn't have to remove any of her lung or heart sac, which was a concern. She could be released from IU Simon Cancer Center as early as Wednesday, and we certainly wish her the best. How exciting to be able to see your son play. Mm -hmm. uh, we just hope she can get out of the hospital and get to a few of those games. Absolutely. Good luck to them. Meantime, it is a Valentine's Day week, almost, here <laughs> in Indianapolis. Uh, maybe you've got some plans tonight, though. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If you do, you definitely need to check the rain and then we're tracking a chance of some snow showers on Wednesday with highs in the upper 30s. Yeah, it looks like that Wednesday night could get a little chilly, but mm -hmm. for now we'll enjoy the mild temperatures. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Well, thank you all so much for joining us here at 6 o'clock on your Saturday. We will be back in about an hour after the Today Show, but we'll have updates throughout then, including any weather mm -hmm. updates on the rain and things like that. Uh, we'll be back with you, though, in about an hour at 8 o'clock, and we'll see you then.